Join us here at Last Adam Tabernacle as we bring Christ to the nation. Glory be to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes, good to see all of you. Today we're going to talk about a subject we all are uh, well versed with. Okay? And uh, the enemy doesn't want it to be, we talked about, preachers who, who talk about it, even when they talk about it in, a, in the right way, okay? Yeah, they are usually apologetic. They have to give a lot of reasons why they are not what? And basically, it is about prosperity, amen? It is about what? Yeah, glory be to God. But someone might say, but you talked about that something. Was it this year, by the way, or in December? This year? The other time, eh? I think I did five weeks. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, I was reading my Bible last week. Uh, yes, and I was in First Kings. So I landed on a scripture which blessed my heart, and I thought that... Uh, Yes, we should talk about, yeah, uh, about it or something related to it. And that scripture is in First Kings, chapter 7, verse 51. It says that, so all the work, First Kings, chapter 7, verse 51, it says that, so all the work that King Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. Remember, he's the one who built the temple, Okay. So, all the work that King Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished, and Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold and the furnishings. He put them in the treasuries of the house of the Lord. Glory be to God. So, this was the house of the Lord. All right? And it's, it had money in it. It was a prosperous house of the Lord. Glory be to God. The treasuries were filled with silver and gold. Glory be to God. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to so, God. Anyway, I thought that, uh, yeah, God would want us to talk about it. And, uh, yeah, anyway, as we shall see. Amen? So, we're talking about the glory of prosperity in L.A.T. The glory of what? Of prosperity in L.A.T. And you will see that prosperity is a kind of glory. Hallelujah. Okay? Financial well-being is a kind of what? Of glory. All right? And God would want his children, and uh, you, okay, to also have that glory, all right? But for it to manifest and to continue, okay, being uh, enjoyed, okay, there are two glories that uh, must be paid attention to because they actually are they are the ones which produce the glory of prosperity. And that is, number one, the glory of his presence. Amen? The glory of God. Hallelujah. And also, the glory of holiness. Hallelujah. Holiness is a glory. Amen? Holiness is what? It's a glory. All right? Hallelujah. You know... That scripture, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Glory be to God. Holiness is beautiful. Amen? Holiness is what? Beautiful, okay? Being glorious, uh, walking in holiness, okay, it is a glory. Glory be to God. Amen? So we're going to talk about the glory of financial prosperity, specifically in L.A.T., and that means you, all right? And we shall see 
that uh, for that to happen and to continue happening, all right, we need to, to pay closer attention to the glory of God, the glory of his presence, and also the glory of holiness. Because those two are the ones which produce prosperity. All right? And as long as you continue to walk in them, okay, financial well-being will be a given. Hallelujah. Amen? Glory to God. Genesis chapter 31, verse 1. I'm going to show you that uh, prosperity is a kind of glory. Amen? Genesis 31, verse 1, in KJV, it says that, and he, talking about Jacob, heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's. And of that which was our father's, hath he gotten all this glory. Glory be to God. If you read in KJV, it will say he has gotten all the wealth of our father. Glory be to God. Amen. Usually, the same words uh, for the glory of God and wealth, okay, in Hebrew, it is actually the same word. It is actually what? The same word. That's why KJV used the real word glory, okay? But in the New World translations, they want you to understand, okay, that it is not talking about the glory of God. It is talking about possessions, okay, material wealth. Glory be to God. So according to God and according to the Bible, okay, prosperity is a kind of glory, okay? And I'm not talking about you owning, what? A thousand houses and how many cars, eh? okay? Please understand, I'm talking about being abundantly supplied. When all your needs are met at whatever level you're at, glory be to God, all right? And you have even more to be a blessing to others. That's what I mean by financial prosperity. All right? I need to apologize that I'm not going to, to promise you. I'm not going to tell you that God told me to tell you <laughs> that he's going to give you all Kabaka's land. You understand? Eh? And you're going to own an oil well in Bunyoro. You understand? Now you can give yourself those words, all right? And it's okay. You understand? You have your words, but they're not going to come from what? <laughs> from me. Do you understand? Eh? I'm not going to tell you that your kids are going to go to, is it called James? Eh? Any, the most expensive uh, school in the country. You understand? Eh? Yeah, you know, eh? okay? I'm not going to tell you you're going to drive the most expensive car. Now, for some of you, God might give you the most expensive cars, okay, in Uganda. God might take your kids to the most expensive school in the country or even in the world, all right? But for me, God hasn't told me to tell you that, okay? What I know is that God, if, for example, if you have kids, God would want your kids to go to school with school fees paid. Your kids shouldn't remain home because of lack of money. Do you understand? Whichever school they're going to. Do you understand? All right? Hallelujah. It is possible that some Christians might never have their own houses. All right? But God will prosper them. Okay? Notice I said some Christians. Eh? I didn't say that some of you. All right? <laughs> I'm using my words carefully because I don't want to discuss, you know, that you want. Eh? Then you're like, ah, I might be one of those. You know, some Christians might never have, in fact, not might. They will never have their own houses. All right? However, God will give them shelter. Do you understand? God will give them where to stay, and he will make sure that, for example, if they are renting, all right, the rents are paid. That is prosperity. That is what? 
That is prosperity. Glory be to God. Amen? Amen? Okay? Not all Christians, okay? This is a joke, all right? So don't get angry at me. I've told you before I said joke. Not all Christians, <laughs> okay, will stay in Unsasa. <laughs> you, you understand? <laughs> You're like, what's that? <laughs> For us, too much change, yeah. And she to lay and the where. Yeah. There's another prosperous place, right? Well. <laughs> yeah. You understand? Yeah? Hey, some Christians will stay, you know, maybe in Islam, but they're born again. And while they're there, God has, you understand? Yeah? That's where God wants them to be. And, and, by the way, while they are there, God might, might say that, you know, I, I'm taking you to another place. Eh? But while they are there, okay, God will be like, yes, I'm providing for you there. I want you to be there. You understand? Okay? You don't have piped water in the house? Okay? Do you understand? And so you have water. I'm telling you, eh, many people, God has blessed many people, but they don't, they don't believe they have been blessed. It's because they compare themselves with, it's okay. Okay? It's okay who is like, I'm going to write what? Bemanjabo, <laughs> now the companies. <laughs> then you just send out Kakati Fair. Do you understand? By the way, in God's estimate, you might find, oh, who, who, who can now use an example? Who wants to feel bad? Okay? All right? <laughs> Esther, okay. Ah, no, no. Okay. Myself. No, I'm more prosperous than you. <laughs> so I can't choose myself. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. Esther, you don't have a cup. No, you have a company. I need someone that Okay. okay. Grace, joy. Then, uh, what? Uh, company. But you know that according to heaven, God might be considering grace, joy, more prosperous than some. Do you know that? Okay, how, how, who is more prosperous than the other, according to heaven, does not depend on who has more in as far as quantity is concerned. Do you understand? For example, the greatest church in the world is not the largest church. Do you understand that? It is not. Now, it is us here on earth who say that is the greatest church. Your song is the greatest church. They have produced more albums. You, you understand? More songs. Okay, so they are the greatest worship, you know, eh? but not necessarily. They could be, but not necessarily. Do you understand? Okay? Yes, so... It's okay having many companies, Zaba and Jah, does not necessarily mean, okay, he is more prosperous than, uh, than who? What's your other name? I know you are okay, but what's your other name? Quesi. Quesi, eh? So, you can find that that young man is more prosperous than this old man. <laughs> Hallelujah. According to heaven. Do you understand? Okay, so if you want to enjoy life, okay, one of the, of the things you should do if you want to enjoy life is to be content. Do you understand? Of course, there are those who are not prosperous. Do you understand? And God wants them to prosper. Okay, if they, can, if they can just do a few basic things. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Okay? But from my survey, the surveys I do when I sit in what? Unsasa. Okay? Most of you are prosperous. You know, eh? Okay? You're prosperous. You're doing well. You're doing what? You're doing well. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, so, Genesis 31 verse 1 has showed us that uh, wealth, okay, is a kind of glory. All right? Psalm 49. Psalm 49, from verse 16, it says that, Do not be afraid when one becomes rich, when the glory of his house is increased. 
So according to this verse, what, is, what does the Bible mean by glory? Yeah? Riches. Okay? It's not rocket science. Amen? Do not be afraid when one, of course, a thief, you understand, eh? becomes rich. When the glory, okay, the riches of his house are increased. Then it says in verse 17 that, for when he dies, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. What will not descend after him? His glory, his dimes, his wealth. Okay? So again, that shows us that financial well-being, okay, money is a kind of glory. Glory be to God. Amen? Now, First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 5. Okay? It says that now David said, Solomon, my son, is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent, famous, and glorious throughout all countries. I will now make preparations for it. So David made abundant preparations before his death. Hallelujah. So David, okay, is preparing. He makes abundant preparations for the house of the Lord, which his son Solomon will build. Okay, because God had told Solomon, rather David, that it is not you who will build the house for my name. All right, he told him it will be your son Solomon. Okay, now let's jump to chapter 29, First Chronicles 29, from verse 1 to 8. It says that King David said to all the assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is great, because the temple is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now the house of my God, now for the house of my God, I have prepared with all my might gold for the things to be made of gold, silver for the things of silver, bronze for the things of bronze, iron for the things of iron, wood for the things of wood, onyx stones to be set, glistening stones of various colors, all kinds of precious stones and marble slabs in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, my own special treasure of gold and silver, 3,000 talents of gold of the gold of offer, and 7,000 talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls of their houses, the gold for the things of gold and the silver for the things of silver, and for all kinds of work to be done by the hands of craftsmen, who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? Okay? Have you seen that? What was going to be used to build, okay, the house of God? You understand? It wasn't, you know, funny stuff. It was... Prosperity, if I should say. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen? It was what? Now, this is David's contribution. One man. All right? But now when you continue, it shows you that even other people contributed. Okay? Verse 6 says that then the leaders of the father's houses, leaders of the tribes of Israel, the captains of thousands and of hundreds, with the officers over the king's work, offered willingly. They gave for the work of the house of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of God, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. And whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord into the hand of that man who was a what? A Gashonite. 
Then the people rejoiced, for they had offered willingly, because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord. And David also rejoiced greatly. Glory be to God. Now this, okay, the house of the Lord wasn't cheap. Okay, the temple of Solomon, as it is called. Okay, it was expensive. Okay, prosperity was lavished on it. All right? And after they had built, okay, they even put treasures in it, as we saw in 1 Kings 7, 51. Okay, the house was expensive, all right? And there was wealth inside there also. Glory be to God. There's a saying that uh, as poor as a church mouse. You know that saying? Very soon you'll get to know it in your work. They'll bring it. I know those guys. All right. <laughs> All right. As poor as what? A church. Now, if there were rats, if there's a rat or there are rats which somehow found their way, in someone's temple. You couldn't call them poor. Glory be to God. You couldn't call them what? Poor man. You can't. <laughs> okay? This thing that as poor as a church, yeah, as that's right, it, it exists because generally, okay, churches are broke. Okay? Okay, the Americans... Uh, by the spirit of God, okay, did what they could to reverse that, okay, because they're the ones who God used. Who, who used them? God used, okay, to put or to start what we call the prosperity gospel. Do you understand? Okay, but the Middle Ages, you, you, you understand, England, what, eh? Churches were broke. Okay? Churches were what? We are broke. Okay? But the Catholic Church was loaded. <laughs> All right? It's amazing, eh? The Catholic Church wants Balochol eh, to be broke. You know, eh? Yet for them. Do you know, <laughs> if you rise to fight against the Catholic Church, you're in big trouble. Do you understand? <laughs> You must have been raised to do that by God. Do you understand? There are organizations or societies or fellowships, okay? Whatever, groups within the Catholic Church. Their work, one of the things they're ready to do is to knock off guys, assassinations, what? It's true. You, you don't fool the Catholic Church. <laughs> No, if they don't do that, they will just spend the dime, splash the money to stop you. Hallelujah. You go, you know, eh? you go slow on the what? The Catholic Church. Probably that's why, now this is what? Political, but you understand these things, amen? <laughs> you are adults and you are Ugandan. Uh, you remember Ranga, the late? The Archbishop, the guy who wanted what? A Catholic president, Chagulani, who took his son to a Catholic school, smack. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Do you understand? Eh? Ranga, you could see the Catholic Church basically gang they supported him. It wasn't just that Museveni was bad according to Ranga. No, it was a religious affair. Do you understand? It was a what? A religious affair. Okay? And according to a dream Dennis had before the elections, which he shared with us, with some people and me, okay, the, it's called the, the Italian embassy in Uganda was involved. It was what? It was involved. Amen? Now, despite all that, this way the rule knowing that the Catholic Church wanted him out. All right? <laughs> okay? All right? 
Do you know the religion of the vice president? She's a Catholic. Okay? Do you know the religion of the speaker? Eh? She said, what? Idea, well, not ideally. You would imagine that he would sideline them. But you can't do that, man. Because first of all, I can't wait to change. But what's the game? All right. And so you can't, you understand? Then they, I heard also that the, the, it's called, the deputy speaker, eh? name is he? I'm telling you, Dep Grace Joy, the deputy speaker, Mukatuli. Mumanya Mukatuli. All right? Okay? Do you know the religion of the prime minister? Hmm? Too many. Eh? Where is the day? Her religion is, she's a mural. Okay? She's a Catholic. Can you imagine four top whatever, you know? What about the CJ? I don't know. Eh? Chief Justice. And I don't know. Any, but you understand. You don't what? You have E. <laughs> Grow a bit. Any, so these guys, what, you know, I was told that one of the, now, this I'm not sure, eh? okay? But in the past, the beginning of this thing called celibacy, you know, like if you're going to be a priest, eh? you should be celebrated, no marriage, eh? all right? Apparently, well, I was told, I don't know if it's true, you can go and find out, is that, uh, you see now, if, you're, if you inherited your father's land, okay, you have more blinds, square miles, milo, eh? or what will make you know? Milo, you know? Okay, now, so you see, okay, so you, you know, you inherited it. Now, when you decide to become a priest, what is going to happen to that land? It goes to the church. You know what I'm saying? Because by by descendants. They're called descendants, not ancestors. <laughs> ancestors are the old ones. <laughs> ah, yeah, descendants. Do you understand? I was told that, that one of the things behind that celibacy thing was to get wealth. Was to get what? <laughs> was to get wealth. Okay? Yeah. You see, now, the Catholic Church is the most loaded. Now, do you know why Protestants, Anglicans, yeah, don't really like you? They don't really like you as a Morocco, a Pentecostal, a baby wempe. You understand? No, they like you, of course, as my sister, my brother, my, yeah, the tribesmen. But when it comes to spiritual things, eh, they have an issue with you. One of the reasons is because, <laughs> is because, yeah, it's because most Balokole eh, hmm, were in the Anglican church. Hmm? Now, already the Anglican church was broke. You know, as compared to the Catholic Church. Now, when you guys exited, you made things worse. Because now all this money that you're going to give today would be what? Paying off the church house. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah? So that is one of the what? The beef they have with you. I tell you then, you will then begin to Talk this money thing, a giving what? Which for them, they were what? And so you got more money. Radio stations, TV stations. Okay? Before the, you understand? Eh? So, one of the reasons why, you know, it's a why they are fake. One of the reasons is just envy. One reason. Of course, the other thing which they say, which I want to be true, eh? Okay, my name is B, you know. Of course, now Bobby Cola, but somehow you guys have been infiltrated, eh? Mob time, as in big time. You know, eh? I think I'm going to say to your grace. Martin knew that the grace guy didn't preach that you can sing however much you want and it's kawa. So now they are like, ah, they, any, any, you understand, eh? Yes, yeah, so there's a money thing. 
There's a money what? A money thing. During COVID, you're the ones who, who started telling, yeah? guys, you can send money, offer yeah? on mobile money. Nemuga went now back with TV radio for you don't care. Then guys, they were like, really, really? Okay. Then a few months down the road, nobody was seen the car. What? Concerning money, you always go ahead of them. They first criticize and they're like, bam, but it's working. <laughs> All right? <laughs> anyway, but the point I'm trying to make is the Lord's house, it was a rich house. It was a prosperous house. All right? And it had treasures in there. Glory be to God. It had what? Treasures in there. All right? Now, how does that relate to you? Okay? First of all, before I tell you how it relates to you, in Haggai chapter 2 from verse 7, it says that, okay, this is God speaking, talking about the time that is yet in the future, okay? He says that, I will shake all nations and they shall come to the, to the desire of all nations, eh? okay? That is the Lord, okay? And I will fill this temple with what? With glory. Now, which glory is God talking about? Okay? There's a temple that is coming, and God says, I will fill it with what? With glory. All right? Is it the glory of his presence or another glory? Okay? Verse 8 says, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. So what glory is God going to fill his house with? All right? Okay? It is my opinion that it's both. The glory of his presence, because remember, the Lord is going to dwell in that temple in Jerusalem. Okay? But also, it is interesting that just after he talks about the glory of the house, he talks about silver and gold. All right? So it is my opinion that it's both. It is what? Both. The glory of prosperity will fill that house, all right? Okay, as Isaiah 60 actually says, okay? And uh, the glory of his presence also. Amen? Hallelujah. So it says that the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Then verse 9 says, the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former. Hallelujah. The glory of the what? Of the temple. You can see Solomon's temple was glorious. Okay? And what made it glorious? It was the dime eh, that was splashed on it. It wasn't a broke house. Hallelujah. And it wasn't just now the walls are expensive, but then there's nothing in the house. When a mouse enters in there, utemulikantu. All right? No, 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 no. Okay? You remember after Solomon had built it, he put in the gold and the silver, okay, in the treasury which his father David had provided. Hallelujah. Now, how does it relate to you? Okay? Now, the Bible says, and you know it, that you are the temple of God. Okay? Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 says, For you are the temple of of the living God. You are what? You are the temple of the living God. All right? As God has said, I will dwell in them. Remember, it is a temple of God where God dwells. So now he's saying, I will dwell in them. I will dwell in you and walk among you. You are the temple of what? The living God. Now, I have showed you that the temple of God wasn't a broke temple. You understand? Okay? The one Solomon built, okay? The one even uh, Zerubbabel and company built, okay? Which was later, years later, renovated by Herod, the so-called Herod's temple. And it is said of that temple that if you had never seen it, 
then you had never seen a beautiful building. Herod's temple. You understand? Eh? Back in the day, if you had never seen that temple, then you had never seen a beautiful structure. Glory be to God. Because even Herod splashed money on it. Glory be to God. Now, the Bible says you are the temple of God. You're the temple of the living God. Glory be to God. Now, if the as the physical temples we are well to do financially, if I should say, then how much more should you be? You the living temple. Glory be to God. Okay, I can tell you this, that God's will is not for any of his children to be broke. Hallelujah. Okay, and remember, I already defined prosperity, all right? Okay, I'm not talking about every one of you having a jet. You know what I mean. <laughs> okay, but when you're in a jet, you're broke. Do they know? That's not what I'm talking about. All right? But I'm talking about where your needs, okay, are abundantly supplied. Goliburu Winji. Hmm? You can sit under a tree at your home and you relax. Okay? No tula mukati, no Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm? Do you understand? Eh? You can, you know, take water, soda, water, you know, as in, you do, you know. Hallelujah. You pay your landlord, you take your kids to school, you have transport. Okay? If you need to, you visit the border, you have the 500K, you know, eh? no. The 500 shillings, you know, okay. I know they don't exist. I know. I'm joking. Right? Okay? Like cutting. Anyway, yeah. You know? That's what I'm talking about. Okay? Children, eh? okay? When you're at school, eh? And you, you have what? But these kids don't know. Okay, you have uh, sugar. You have tea leaves. Eh? You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> eh? well, eh, that's what I think you know. And you have grab. Almost, eh? You have what? <laughs> Hallelujah. You can go to the whatever and buy fried cassava, you know. <laughs> you, <laughs> those things will still exist. Fried cassava. Ah, yeah. In smoke we used to call them what? Chibuga. <laughs> Chibuga. You see now there was... I heard that. The reason why they used to call them Chibuga. You know, Chibuga means a city. All right? So apparently, some people were calling the boiled one. They used to call it Chalo. <laughs> huh? You understand? <laughs> now, the city, you're more uh, developed, more, more prosperous. So now for you, you fry. You understand? <laughs> Hence, Chibuga. All right? <laughs> Chibuga. Now, we had the guy in Smack, he was there below us, below me, okay, who was very tall and, eh, and skinny. You know, tall and guy, you know. <laughs> then guys began to call him Chibuga. <laughs> and Chibuga went on to become the HP. Okay? After our, the Yunasan, the HP. Now, at a certain point, I was also very tall and skinny. So guys began to wear, they, they can nickname and began, Chibugawa, you know. <laughs> but somehow, by the grace of God, even when I wasn't saved, it died out. <laughs> okay? Yeah, so yes, okay, at any level, a child can be prosperous. You understand? Eh? Prosperous, and then sometimes the parents might even wonder, Hey, you know, I didn't bring you sugar the other day, but you still have sugar. Say, yeah, because my friends gave me. Why? Because the blessing. Do you understand? A child can be more prosperous than parents. Hmm? A child. As parents are they are what? Wandering school fees. A child gets a scholarship when it is now known the parent's blessing. 
okay, that has brought it, but it is the blessing upon a kid. Kuanga, the kid, you know, from early days, them days, okay, would give a two hundred, you know, in charge. You understand? Eh? And God prospers the child. Glory be to God. Amen. Then you say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, the temple of God was a rich church. It was a rich building. And now you are the temple of God. God wants you to be well off. God wants you to be what? Well, it is his will. Okay? It is his will. Okay? It is his will. Now, you know, eh? yeah. People have abused this thing. Eh? And now, you know, the enemy has succeeded in shutting up preachers from talking about it. Okay? It is the enemy, okay, has ganged up with the Catholic Church, you understand, <laughs> okay? And some Anglicans to make sure that Barocco has stopped talking about it. Okay? And in fact, now with the scandals in the church, now many Barocco, many Biwempe people are now going back, eh? Okay? So, man, the enemies, you know, and those guys, they are celebrating that right now we have them. You know, the guys are going back, eh? okay? And for reasons, Bambi, which are understandable. Hmm? Okay? But we can, we can and we shall prosper in the right way. Okay? Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? And like I said, most of you, if not all of you, you're already prosperous. Okay? Okay? And if you are, and yes, you are, God wants to increase you. Okay? God is a God of increase. God is a God of what? God is a God of increase. Hallelujah. Amen? He's a God of what? Increase. Okay? Many of you are not as blessed in quotes, as Andrew. Andrew for him even has a year. Years ago he had a dream. The year when the dime, you know, eh, will be like Solomon's dime. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Glory be. Man, that would be, you know, nice if you are, you know, you just, you just sit and chill and, eh? okay? But you know that you can mess up that dream. You can mess it up, eh? If you don't do what God is expecting of you to do. Glory be to God. So you're the temple of the what? Yes. And just like Solomon's temple, just like Herod's temple, God wants you to be well off financially. All right? So that if a rat comes, huh? a rat comes, man, the rat doesn't get annoyed for having wasted its time. You've heard of those stories of thieves who come to steal and they find nothing and they cut a wire. Then they beat guys for nothing because they didn't find what? Uh, you've heard of those stories, eh? Where thieves cut a wire because you have nothing. <laughs> All right? And you end up receiving slaps which you wouldn't have received had you had what? Something. Glory be to God. But these are true what? The stories. Hallelujah. Amen? Meanwhile, there was a, there was this quote about a clip, a video clip, which Juliana sent me of what happens to people who, who don't tithe, to Christians who don't tithe. Did you see it? Rachel did, uh, we said, oh, you sent it? <laughs> Anyway, don't worry whether you sent it or it wasn't a spiritual thing, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so, man, eh, the rat, they showed this the rat, went and found the guy's, was it laptop? Yeah. Yeah. Under the chair, is it? The guy had hidden it. And this rat came and you know, then pulled out the thing, opened, got out the dollars, and then it took off. Right? Did you see it? <laughs> what happens to what? Yeah, anyway, God wants you to be well off. 
God wants you to be what? Well off, okay? Please never lose hope in this. Never lose what? Never lose hope. The Bible says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Okay? Okay? Never lose hope. As long as you're doing the right thing. Okay? Temu gua muchi. Temu gua eh. Okay? Subi, mani, whatever. Okay? Hallelujah. And those of you, most, the, many of you who are doing well, okay? You can tell God, I want more. All right? And God will give you. And there's some of you, even if you don't tell God that you want more, he will force it on you. Because you've been so good to him. You've been so good, what? So good to him. If you refuse it, eh, he will give it to your grandkids. Seven have been to Sibia and gave this stuff is not what? It's not mine. They belong to your grandfather. Hallelujah. Hey man, eh? The days we are living in are interesting. Like as a country. Okay? Uh, who should I use? Do you know that in this country there are kids whose grandparents are presidents or they are ex presidents? Okay? There was a time when that wasn't there, man. Nikat Warwa Van. Jajava, you understand? <laughs> you know, I thought about it recently. I thought, hey, man, now this is what? Serious. Hmm? There are kids now eh, who's, who's what? Uh, grandfather or mother, and, and these grandes are still alive. All right? And they were like, you know, they are, they are, or they were prime ministers. I even wonder how, what? Teachers manage to, to deal with those kids. One, 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 you know. <laughs> like if you, if you yourself are not, what? You say, or you might even end up favoring them, eh? giving more attention to them. Mwana warugunda. Not mwana, but muzukuru. You know. <laughs> okay. Then are these messed up schools, okay? Which, uh, when kids come back from holidays, they ask them where, where they traveled. Where did you, you know? Then some of your kids will say, well, we went to Sasa, you know? <laughs> Okay, went to watch his, what, Luero, you know, which is okay, by the way, all right, because that's what we have, that's very okay. Yeah, that's why they went, yeah, good. <laughs> then there are kids, man, you know, eh? they, okay, and they, yeah, there's pressure, man, there's what? <laughs> there's pressure, okay, you know, when I was in Olevo, I'll tell you this, Man, eh? now these kids are, are going to get to know what. So, any anyway, books were tight. Books were what? Ebita obiaga na azine. But according to me, I used to do my best. But in retrospect, I was like, no, <laughs> I did. But anyway, reading was hard. Then it is one week to exam that now you try cramming, then the cramming doesn't work. Okay, man, things were what? Things were tight. Okay, now, what I'm going to say next, children understand that I wasn't born again, okay, at that time. So now twice, twice, I doctored my report. That's good. <laughs> if they don't know what it means, that's good. But I'm sure they can understand in context. Man, eh? things were bad. <laughs> Remember, first I switched. I, you know, I know what I did. Either it was a three, which you turn into an eight. Then, man, you go home, tell your dad, you know, they cheated me here. As in, they didn't count well, uh, like the total. Okay, if that counted well, this 50 you know, would have pushed me maybe to number 16. 
or sir, you understand? Then, but I remember, you know, I think the second time or the first time, my dad grabbed me. It was real plain that some this figure, man, the guy grabbed me. Any man, eh? school life for me it was tough. I don't admire people who are in school. I don't admire you. Okay, okay. The other time I told that kid, that uh, boy, in Dennis's lab, I saw a kid laugh. What? <laughs> Happy? So I told him that he enjoy life before best work begins, eh? as in before school work, eh? enjoy eh? before that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, things were tight. So, you know, but what, what was that? Eh, ah, now, you know, things were bad. Eh? Things were what? Bad. One time I got 7% in history. 7%. And now in SMAC, they, for every subject, they would even put the position you held in that what? <laughs> subject. All right? So I remember in our stream that year, that term, we are 53 in our stream. I think that was either 2B or 3B. S to be, form to be, okay? We never used to have the things of senior, what, like Buddha. For us, we are form, you understand? Form one, form two, okay? Chagulani Sani is in form one. Huh? Anyway, that's another point. So, 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 we are like 53. So this guy wrote zero seven, okay, out of 100. Then there was like a box for the position you held in history. A guy wrote 53 <laughs> <laughs> out of 53. <laughs> My dad, I, I, things were what? Things were bad, all right? Then, uh -huh. Yeah, this is where I was going. Then I remember my dad used to tell me that, that, you know, you are there instead of reading your books. You know, do you know that all those, you know, all those guys in Kamocha on the roadside, like in those days, it was really bad, you know, Kamocha, roadside down, about 200 years, right? Guys, the guys, do you know that all those guys were in Chisuvi? They were all in Chisubi. You were here playing. You know, they were in Chisubi and Budo. All, <laughs> all those were. But now, you know, as a kid, those things don't click. Okay? Joe and say amen. <laughs> you understand? You are like, ah, it can't happen. And even then, even now, when it clicks a bit, and you go to read, there's a way in which after two minutes, things can't, man. All right? And so he used to tell me, and you're there, instead of reading your books. Now, my dad knew the truth that there were so many rich kids in the school. Okay? So and so, the presidential advisors, what, ministers, son, what, you understand? Eh? Okay? So he used to tell me that you are there, okay, deceiving your friends because you want to be like them. Eh? appear you're like you, you say loaded, you know. Say you're there deceiving your friends that your father has a farm. <laughs> eh? Because in his head, I think it was like, eh, the rich guys, remember, like in those days they which carries, eh? but given a farm, eh? what now guys are buying land expensively. Okay? Alright? <laughs> those were rich, any anyway, those guys had farms. Okay? So now my dad didn't. And I think he also wanted to have. But I think things were tight. <laughs> so you see, you're there deceiving your friends that your father has a farm. Instead of reading your books, your father didn't have a farm. But you're there, you're telling your friend, my father has a farm. <laughs> and that's how bad what things are. My point I'm trying to make is that what? Or oh, what God wants you to know is that he delights in your prosperity. God wants to what? Hallelujah. You can go and ask your mother, eh, you know. But I don't know if she remembers those stories. Man, things like, yeah. The reason why you know, my dad was on my case mob eh, is because he's, so, he's like, I remember this guy especially when he was in what? Primo, okay? Primary, okay? He, yeah, he was good, you know. Eh? Now I went to Chisubi, now. 
So he had, he's like, a guy that's it, potential. <laughs> but man, that potential guy, it's, you know, just things are tight. You try how, hmm? okay? Things are what? Um, okay? You see these stories, uh, sometimes they are more, more important than what? <laughs> because they minister to what? People in, in a way God knows how, I don't know. And I'll tell you the stories, okay? So in a way, things were tight, okay, all level. Then around, I think, either, I don't know, senior four, like second time or something like that, it's somehow it's like an anointing, a grace man, somehow, you know. <laughs> anyway. Then there was a teacher who used to teach us physics, Mukasa. Some guy called what? Mukasa. Okay, he knew me that, you know, that uh, guy, you know, eh? Taina <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so, so, and so we do cantab, okay? Now, it's amazing, and yes, we do cantab, senior four exams, then results are out. Now, I got to know my results, from some guys in Makere College. I was in Chisuvi. But people in Makere College, okay? My, that's why, you know, so I just went to school to confirm, okay? Because there was a teacher who used to teach French, was in SMAC, who moved to college school, Makere College, Marcos, all right? And uh, so he somehow got the results of Unison from his friends in Smart. And then I think he told my brother and some people that, man, your brother. And the thing is, I'd butted. Glory be to God. Something had happened, but it wasn't witchcraft. <laughs> All right? So, I, my dad, now my dad was diabetic. All right? So, in a way, somehow he also got the news, I think, from my bro. Hi, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it went to smack with him. So when we got there in the, remember the reception? Okay? When we got there, so we were, you know, so as they are giving me the my sleep or whatever, you know? Mukasa, remember? That teacher who never used to gain in me, he was a physics uh, <laughs> teacher. You know, gaining? Gaining in me, okay? That term is from uh, Namiriango guys. Gaining in someone is like, you understand, you, you esteem him. Then if some guys become fake, you're like, uh, I've lost in you. All right? <laughs> you understand? And so, Mukasa enters the office. Then he sees me. Then the guy came, you know, to see where this fake, what the eye, then I saw the guy was in shock, man. Eh? You know. Now, fast forward, okay? I, I go back, senior five. Senior five. And now Mukasa is our teacher, physics, senior five. The first test he gave us, okay? Mechanics. I think I got like six out of 50. Okay? Six out of 50. Okay. <laughs> then there's a guy who wrote on my what? On my paper that I hope you did not do a wrong combination. Because <laughs> remember, the chi guy, not the chi guy, but the guy, the chi guy, he knew me from what? And he said, How did this guy even get? But you know, because I was among the top part, Students in smart. So then now I can't, now he's like, now I've, now, I, yeah. then man, see, ah, uh, she girl was like, I hope you're not doing the wrong combination. Because guys are like, you know, some, you know, yeah? And so that's how what? Tough things were. Glory be to God. That's how what? Tough things were. Then I don't know who did, anyway, what happened, okay? Once again. Hallelujah. Eh? The what? The glory. 
the glory of the latter house. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. But God wants you to do what? To do well. Hallelujah. Okay? And even if you, if you understand, and it doesn't depend on your, how gifted you are, how talented you are, how brilliant you are. What about Gabba and he came into Mumauli? They told so a bit again. I don't know why they, they even write. Do you know, do they know the audience they are writing to? Okay? Who give a one he gave into? Even Nava Zoom, even white English people, you can't click what guys are writing. Ugandans writing to Uganda. I know I just try to show how brilliant they are. I don't know what, what is their case. Okay? All right? Hallelujah. So, even if you're not that, eh? okay, God is willing to bless you. Okay? The guy is, wow, brilliant, did well in school, but man, eh? things are tight. Things are what? Yeah. But you should read your books, all right? <laughs> all right? But should things happen, eh? okay, or they happened, eh? okay, don't lose hope, all right? You're a child of God, you're the temple of God, and God wants to prosper you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God wants to do what? To prosper you. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, this prosperity, for it to manifest, all right? Okay, for it to happen, if I should say, just as it has happened for most of you, okay? Remember, I said you have to give attention to two other kinds of glory. Okay, number one, the glory of his presence. Okay? After Solomon had built the temple, the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 that the glory of God filled the temple. The glory of God did what? It filled the temple. You see, the glory of God was the most important thing. Okay? The most important thing was then the prosperity which built the temple. Because remember, it is the house of the Lord, or the house for the Lord. Glory be to God. Now, you have to, you see, you have to keep the main things as the main thing. Okay, you shouldn't run after the gold. You shouldn't do what? You shouldn't run after the gold. Give special attention to this thing called what? The glory of God. Okay, remember, you are his temple. And God wants to fill you. So give more attention, okay, to your relationship with God. Do you understand? Okay? That is the most important thing. Okay? Because that was the most important thing. God, you remember, God inhabited or he dwelt in, in a tent. Okay? Moses is what? Utabanako. Or we can say Moses is temple. A tent, but it was there. So the most important thing is not the gold and the, the silver. Okay, it is him. It is the Lord. Glory be to God. So maintain eh, and do all that you can to improve your relationship with God. Keep him as the focus. All right? And even use what you have, the, what he has given you so far, for his glory. Okay? For the good of the kingdom. Are you listening to me? Matthew chapter 6, uh, you know, it says that you cannot serve God and mammon. You can't put them on the same what? They're not, they're not equal. Hallelujah. Okay? You can't do that. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 6, it says that, but you, O man of God, okay, woman of God, Flee these things, okay? What is the... No, is that 10? No. With 10 says, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of what? Of all kinds of evil. The love of money. Okay? You're supposed to love God. Okay? Set your affection on God, on the things of God. Don't set your affection on God. Okay? God, the prosperity, is supposed to be... A, a result, a consequence. This is very important. Eh? Hallelujah. 
Amen? You all know weird things people have done for money. Christians, eh? Hmm? Okay? All right? And by the way, several of them have gotten the money. Okay? But they are going to hell. They're going where? To hell. Okay? Now this false grace gospel is helping them to think that all is well. Okay? And by the way, that's why some people have... People don't want to get saved. They want to remain Catholics. You know why? Because uh, if you are here, what? Okay, even if you're bad, even if you're bad, when you die, you go to a place called purgatory. Okay? Catholics, eh? there's a place where they say when you die, before you go to hell, you go to a place called purgatory. Where there's a little suffering, okay? But if guys here are praying for you, God will take you out of what? Purgatory and take you to heaven. So do you see how it is so comforting to be a Catholic? Do you understand? You steal how, however much you want, you rob people, you, do, you understand? You do all those things eh? and you're like, I'm making it. Okay, no problem. All right? Then Baroque right now I've begun to think that, ah, even if you're doing those things, but you got saved in P2, no problem. There's there for now, no what? No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. When you feel guilty, you're like, no, that's self-righteousness. You're trying to make yourself, huh? You are not supposed to feel guilty. Because why feel guilty when Jesus took all your sins away? Now you're trying to what? Are you greater than the grace of God? Are you greater? Are you greater than the blood of Jesus? <laughs> These are the things that guys ask. Are you greater? Yeah? All right. <laughs> are you greater than the blood of Jesus? Is that sin greater than you? Know? You're not supposed to feel guilty. When you feel conviction, that's guilty. You know, okay? Conviction, the Holy Ghost is convicting you of sin. Say, I no, 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 that is what? Self-righteousness. Hmm? You're trying to earn your salvation. Hmm? Didn't Jesus pay it all? Didn't Calvary cover it all? Now it's a problem. This therefore now no what? Condemnation. Hmm? There's a video, a clip I received where homosexuals have begun a church in Uganda. Some young kids, eh? Brian Zwanjo sent it to me. You see some young kids have begun a what? There's a church in Uganda, man. Okay? And they are like, one of the verses they are used when a witch is that there is no condemnation. Then another one says, hey, oh, wow, I am a child of God, you know. These things are very serious. And when you realize how that message, how deadly it is, eh, then man, you can't shut up about it. You're like, I mean, just leave them to preach what they want. You just mind your thing. No, 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 no. Glory be to God. <laughs> okay? Hallelujah. So, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith. What has happened to them? They have strayed. That means they are no longer in the faith. So it is not true that once saved, always saved. They have strayed from the faith. Okay? They have strayed from what? In their greediness. So the love of money, okay, can be defined as Greediness. Greedy, greedy. You're greedy. You're ready to do whatever it takes to get more. Okay? So they are strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. All right? Flee from the love of money. Okay? If you just focus yourself on the love of God, I'm telling you, money will come. Money or what? It will come because it is written in the scriptures. 
Okay, that God blesses the righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go on. I think I'm supposed to go on with it. Okay? Okay? So, okay? Flee from the love of what? Of money. Okay? Okay? All right? Okay? Flee from the love of what? Of money. Hmm? Do you know that even enough of us to look pressure? I tell you, more about yourself with pressure. Eh? You always watch, you know that now this person more than so preaching in prosperity. Guy, you what? Uh, uh, but I've read it, I already defined it for you what prosperity is. For me, according to me, I'm very prosperous. Do you understand? Okay? There is never a time when I needed to move from Unsasa to Chiwatule and I failed because I didn't have what? a one K. You know, that is, you know, when it was the will of God for me to move from Unsasa to Chiwatule. God said, go, then you, but God now, yeah? Never. Do you understand? That is prosperity. Okay? As far as transport is concerned, I'm doing okay. All right? When I finish church here and my wife has taken the car, okay, I'm prosperous. You know, Rachel will be like, do you know that in itself is a blame? When some, do you know there are people who are never asked whether they need a lift? <laughs> Not here in church, all right? Please don't worry. But even here in church, I guess you are there. <laughs> On the contrary, man, girls just shower you with dust. <laughs> you know? You know now, it's, you know, a lift, that is God who has transported you. Do you understand? Okay? Uh, you know, you know, people are prosperous and they don't understand it. And they don't act, and for that reason, they don't thank God for that. Hallelujah. Okay? I have shoes. The people who look at me say, but pastor, you have one pair of shoes. But I have shoes. I'm prosperous. I have a shoe. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have what? Yes. You know, eh? Glory be to God. As in, I'm doing, you can't sit me down, eh? And, and convince me that I'm not, what? You can't. I even don't know how, how do you start? You understand? How do you start? Let me see, eh? Let me try and see how you start. I don't see where you start. I'm doing well. I eat food. Do you understand? You know, I eat food. I might not eat food as expensive as yours, okay? But I, God gives me food. In fact, I'm better than Elijah. Elijah, for him, a bird, a bird, a raven would bring him food. Now, for me, God died. You know, a rough, a bad, a, a dirty bad bring you food. Now, was Elijah a broke guy? People were dying in famine. Elijah was somewhere, some Kakona man in prosperity. In the evening, in the morning, the raven will bring bread and meat, eh? is it? And flesh. Okay? Okay? Then there was a brook. I know. Who has, God has never dis, defined prosperity as a fridge. You go to someone's house and they don't have a fridge. You all have a man, a better gasala. Who told you? Who told you? Do you know how tasty Amazigen Sua? I always forget. I always say the moment we get our house, eh? I'll get that point. But I always forget. Now, my wife did not know those things. So she asked me, so where are you going to put it? <laughs> then she's like, so, uh-huh. So tell. But I remember the when you were kids, then they village your what? I remember that water, but now. Ay, ay, get you fridge, nothing. They, that water fridge, there is nothing. You ever would test what? That water in the pot, they have smoked it. If you tested it in Kamwenge, in your man, that's what I stand at. You understand? You, pray, you know? Hallelujah. Eh? Glory be to God. Where are we? 
Hallelujah. Amen? Yeah. Hmm? You're doing well, man. Hmm? You're doing what? You're doing well. You're doing very well. But God wants to increase you. If you, if things are not okay, God wants to prosper you. But just keep the main things as the main thing. Keep the love of God the main thing. Okay? Don't get into the love of money. Yeah. Yes, I was telling you. Mutu saku pressure. Mutu sa what? Okay? Because katiabana wagala prosperity anointing. If your pastor is broke, you're going to become broke. Because you partake. Okay? So now, pastors have to appear prosperous. Because if they are not, then people will leave. And then if you, are, you appear broke, people won't sow into you. Because if they sow into you, they will reap prosperity. What? <laughs> <laughs> you put guys on pressure. Okay? For that reason, man, eh, pastors have got it into get stuff. Do you know how much money is in that stuff? I'm telling you, eh, guys, you know, you just do what? You send a video, $100,000 on the house. You understand? I don't know why, 100000 not 10000 You know, on the house, just send a video, evidence, you know? And man, you understand? Eh? Hey, but uh, that shouldn't happen. Hallelujah. Amen? There was a time when Andrew uh, gave me a lift somewhere near Makere. Okay, then it clocked lunchtime. to get there for lunch. We looked around for a place to pull up. And then I took him to a place. I think Yavaya Gamba, man, this guy. I don't think he has a prosperity anointing. <laughs> Did you tell your wife? Eh? Yes or no? It's not bad if you told her. Okay. Now you see, people don't tell everything to their wives. Now, in a place. <laughs> Recently, by the way, I was like, what's wrong with you? I didn't, you know? But of ah, man, eh? Now, what about Wukanori and Gamba? But we had no choice. You remember? We had no choice because we didn't know the place, so we didn't know where the eating places are. But we're like, anyway, let's just enter here. Twingila, you know. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> then, man, eh? one of the things that made me feel like, man, am I going to eat this food? Was the waitress. Manyomu to Akutamia, you're like, should I really place this order? But you're like, but now, if we don't, then you have to go get the car, then drive. But I'm going to jam, Anyway, as long as they, they bring it hot. That's a trick, by the way. Never eat cold stuff in some places. Make sure it's hot. Because the hot, it jams, what? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, eh? But sometimes, man, those guys have very nice food, man. Very nice food, man. Aye, aye, very. It reminds, you know. And better you men, be careful when you start to talk f- f- food stuff with your wife. Otherwise, you get in trouble. Okay? Years ago, we just got married, so sometimes I'll take my wife out to the chef. Amen? <laughs> And yeah, so we're eating local, and I, and I was telling man, these groundnuts, man, these groundnuts are very nice, you know? So I told her, you know, because you remember you're in love, what? Eh? So I told her, ask what? Those guys, how they make them. <laughs> you know when you're in love, you're stupid, you can't say things like that. Then she's like, no, I won't ask you. Man, ask, man, these things are nice. Okay? Then, like, I think a year later, I realized that we no longer eat groundnuts at all. <laughs> hey! So I was like, baby, what happened? Guy, the Sharia Vinyevo, you know? Which is like, but you told me that I don't know how to cook groundnuts. 
I was like, when did I ever say that? So she's like, don't you remember you told me to ask? I was like, but I didn't say. Man, these women of ours, Quiz, you had better learn this thing. Be careful. Your father should train you. What? What? what how? Eh? Or your mother who can actually help you. Say, don't whatever say like this. Don't, yeah? Before it is what? You get in trouble. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4 says, Nevertheless, you Philippians have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving. Okay? I'm showing you how you should use the money. Okay? For the glory of God. And when you do that, the money will come. All right? Don't go for them. Okay? So these guys were giving to the gospel. Verse 16, for even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessity. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, unacceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And the result is, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Okay, now, I was, the scriptures I prepared as I was going to preach didn't include this verse. All right? Didn't include it. Okay? Then, as I was driving in the car, it was tuned into the radio, was tuned into a Christian radio station, okay, then the guy was speaking, quoted this verse, okay, but from NIV, and NIV says, God will supply your need according to his glorious riches, and man, to me, I was like, God was confirming what I was going to preach, okay, the glory of prosperity, all right, glorious what? Riches, Remember I told you, riches are what? It's a kind of glory. I hadn't thought about this scripture. Hallelujah. It is there, and it says that God will meet your needs according to his what? Yes, God wants to bestow that glory upon you, okay? Most of you already have it, okay? But some of you don't know, all right? <laughs> all right? Hallelujah. But, and if you're in need, God wants to increase it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And lastly, the glory you should give special attention to is the glory of holiness. It is the what? The glory of holiness. Holiness is a glory. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, it says that husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a what? A glorious church. Okay? Then he defines what glorious means in this scripture. It means not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. It means being holy and without blemish. Glory be to God. According to Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, if you walk in holiness, if you walk according to the word of the Lord, okay, you will prosper. Glory be to God. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Day and night, it means he's giving serious attention to the word of God. Not be no what, you know, you read when you want to, when you feel like, when you're happy, or when your boyfriend chucks you. That's when now you go to the scriptures to get some comfort, okay? They broke my heart, you want it to be mended, okay? But day and night, every day, Okay, so when you do that, the Bible says you shall be like a tree 
planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does, he shall prosper. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Last Adam Tabernacle, Christ for the Nations.